welcome back to my channel in today's video we're gonna get a little repot done so i have a little overdue phalaenopsis to repot this one is the phalaenopsis sogo relics i got it about six months ago and um it's been blooming sequentially for six months it has really nice purple flowers they smell like grapes I sometimes wonder if I take the color of a flower and just assume it smells like the color of a fruit that, <laughs> that it is. But no, it smelled very fruity. It reminded me of grapes and um, I got to repot it. So when you get Phalaenopsis orchids, a lot of times they come in these like little sleeves and they do fine in this sort of situation. But the moss that it's in is usually very tight, very compact and... Um, when you water it, it stays wet for a long time. So a lot of people tend to overwater. They don't know how to repot it. Um, so this is more for beginners. I'm gonna show you how to repot this orchid. I'm really behind on all of my repots. So we're heading into May. I have not done that much. I've maybe got through 10% of my collection. Um, so I'm going away on a trip. Um, and I'll be away for a couple of weeks, but when I get back, I'm going to hit the repotting very hard in the end of May, so there'll be more challenging repot videos. But anyway, let me show you how to deal with an orchid like this. And I'm going to pot it in sphagnum moss, which I have right here. And I find a lot of success with my orchids in sphagnum moss, Phalaenopsis in particular. I use very fluffy moss, and I've had seedlings that have always grown in moss and I tend to get really really good root growth if you want to check out a video of one of my orchids that just went bonkers check out this one right here so you could see my um, Phalaenopsis LD's Bear King I repotted it and um, I put it in moss and in two years it grew wonderful roots it was about the size of this so I'm a little afraid of how big all of my fowls are getting and um, I put it into a much larger pot with moss but this time i added some chunky uh, coconut husk in it just because it was a bigger pot and it's still getting pretty big let me actually show you i wasn't going to show you this orchid but here it is this is my phalaenopsis ld's bear queen king queen i forgot ld's bear king rh3 this is one of my most popular videos on this channel i repotted this as a seedling about three years ago, three and a half years ago, and then it went bonkers, it got really big, then I repotted it again. I did a video just showing the before and after, and the root growth is just insane. So I'm really happy with using sphagnum moss. I'm gonna show you how I pot up my Phalaenopsis orchids, and um, I'm gonna go through my thought process in getting these into their new pots. Um, a lot of folks are concerned about sphagnum moss, so this is all dependent on your um, environment, how, how humid it is, how you water. I tend to use very fluffy sphagnum moss and I try to use a pot as small as possible. That way, when the roots grow, they grow quite well and they can absorb all of that, um, all of that moisture. But if you, um, if you put something in a huge pot, this has a massive root system. In fact, the roots are growing from the bottom. This is absorbing everything. If you put it in a huge pot and it doesn't have a good root system, you can rot the roots because there's so much moisture, it's not really gonna be absorbed, and then that promotes rot. So I use a pot that's a little smaller, so I'm gonna use a pot like this, which isn't too big. And we're gonna check out the um, root system in this. A little this could survive in this sort of setup for a while, but you just can't water very often because this drenches the roots so much that they can rot. So sometimes you could go two weeks without watering something like this. So you just have to be careful. But with that said, when something's in this for so long, it tends to have a really good root system and usually can take off even better once you get it into a larger pot. But yeah, check out this LD's Bear King. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It was smaller than this when I got it. And now it like pretty much is so heavy that it falls. But this has been very happy. Started out in moss, moved it to a much larger, this is a seven inch pot and had to add some coconut husk to add more aeration. 
I only do that when the pot is really big, over six, seven inches. But this was very happy with moss. This is mostly moss and some husk. And yeah, just want to give you an update on this as well. So let's get started and I will show you how to repot that orchid. All right, so I've taken this orchid and I've saturated it with water to make the sphagnum moss a lot easier to remove. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off, these little butterfly clips, get the little stake off. And because this is more of a novelty fowl, sequential bloomer, we're gonna leave the spike on. So there's some differences between um, some of the winter blooming fowls and some of the novelty summer blooming fowls. And um, whenever a flower comes from the same spike and reblooms often, a lot of times that's a summer bloomer. And you don't wanna cut the spike off. You can, um, especially after repotting, it will help the roots, but this looks like it's a healthy orchid. If the root system is good, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this. Um, but these tend to re-spike and continue to spike. So we're gonna leave this one and see if it could push out some more um, blooms. So let's get this off. I really like that this orchid bloomed for such a long time. Here's the ID, Phalaenopsis Sogo Relics. We're going to take the ID out and then I'm going to use my sterilized cutting scissors here and we're just going to cut this and get it out. So let's see, this looks like a good root system. So it's going to be pretty easy. Repotting fowls for me is the easiest because they're usually in moss like this and they're, they don't usually get too stuck or anything. Um, we have a dead root right here. Yeah, this is very, very packed down. It's not like they survive just fine, but it's not ideal. I find that once I upgrade the pot a little bit to something bigger, um, they do tend to grow a little bit better. They grow faster. Um, that's just what I've noticed in growing these orchids. And then you have less time where this is soggy. So you'll be able to water more often and it could dry out. And also like when you have moss that's packed down like this, it's hard to hydrate it. Oh, you could hear the ice cream truck outside. Summer is coming soon. Anyway, when you, um, when you get moss like this, it's hard to hydrate because if it dries, it takes a long time for it to rehydrate. So some of it is still a little on the dry side. So we're gonna dig into this carefully and get off anything that we can without hurting the roots. So I'm just gonna dig in here with my fingers and free this moss. Can you hear the ice cream truck outside? It is gonna be 65 degrees. So after I make this video, I'm gonna head out and enjoy the day. It's gonna be really pretty. Spring is nice in New York, it's just short-lived, and then we get really hot summer temperatures, and then I don't wanna be in the grow room because it's really hot, so I'm always sweating. All right, we're gonna go in here. Yeah, this is so packed down. This is the only part I don't like about these little sleeves when they're packed in like this, but it's super common, but they're very easy to repot. All right, it looks like the middle here is pretty empty. Just gonna be very careful and gentle here. I could probably soak this a bit more to make it easier to remove. I put water in it, but it didn't fully absorb. Yeah, there's not much by way of roots in the middle. The, the roots all grew from the outside, which is okay, but it looks decent. Let's see. Okay. We wanna be very careful with these roots, but they're gonna be okay. They're gonna establish really well in their new pot. I'm only repotting one orchid today. That's why I'm using a little plate here. Otherwise I use like a little repotting mat and then I have a system where I dump everything in the garbage and then clean the mat and move on so I could go faster. But this one I'll just, this plate I'll just throw into the dishwasher when I'm all done. Let's see, almost there. You can see these roots are pretty hydrated. 
Um, so they're nice and green. If they're like silvery, that means that they are uh, dry. And I am using gloves to repot because back in January, I got scratched by my mom's cat and I ended up in the hospital. And the thing is, after I got scratched by my mom's cat right here on my wrist, um, I repotted some plants and I ended up with cellulitis on my hand and an infection that rapidly spread up my arm, which was insane. And it was either from the cat or it was from the um, the plants I had. It must have gotten infected because of that. I had a Band-Aid on and everything, but I don't even know what happened there. But I ended up in the hospital for three days. It was not fun um, over something that I, I didn't think was a big deal. And now I use gloves to repot because I don't want to ever go through that ever again. It was pretty crazy to me. Like, <laughs> I've never been hospitalized in my life. And of all things, a cat scratch got me. Or a plant, or the plant got me from inside of the wound. It was in my hand and it, it literally went right up my bicep. Anyway, we got most of this out. I'm gonna put more water on this to free it a little bit more. Okay, we soaked this a little bit more, so now we can get rid of some more of this moss here, which it should be much easier now. And we're gonna look at the root system. So we see that there's a lot of really good roots here. They're nice and healthy, but we have some dead roots that we're gonna cut off. And the dead roots look like this. They're papery, they have no substance to them, so we're going to get rid of those shortly after I free all this old moss. Um, and then the new pot will allow these roots to kind of like spread out a little bit more. You can see they like all clustered on the outside of the pot. Now they'll be more comfortable in a bigger pot with fluffier moss. And it'll probably get big like my other fowl that I just showed you. I really don't know what I'm going to do with that one. This is another dead root. You'd see it's squishy, not the best. Okay, so I mean, that's it for now with the moss. We'll, we'll keep getting the rest of it out. I'll soak it shortly and get the rest of it off in the sink. But we're gonna take our sterilized scissors and then we're gonna cut. So sometimes the root is alive. We're gonna cut just under where the root is alive. That way we don't introduce a wound into healthy tissue. So I'm just gonna leave a little piece of dead root right there and then we take the rest of it off um like here's another example like this is alive but this part is dead so we're just gonna leave we're gonna cut into the dead tissue and leave the healthy tissue alone to not introduce a wound similar to me so the orchid doesn't get sick in case there's any pathogens or anything like that on my cutting tools which i did sterilize by the way but you never know Viruses are prevalent in orchids and they can spread very easily. So here we have another one. And I think that is it. We really don't have much by way of dead roots. If we see something halfway dead, I usually leave it because it's not a big deal. Well, this one's squishy, this part is alive. I'm just gonna leave that, this part is dead. We're going to cut that off. And I'm going to give this one final rinse to get all of this old moss off and then we're going to put it into the fresh moss over there. Okay, this is all clean now. So we're going to use this little pot here. I have them linked below. I use so many pots through the years, but this one has good drainage holes. I have a saucer for it, which I will get later, but we're going to take some moss. We're gonna keep it nice and fluffy and we're just gonna put it on the bottom. I don't pack my moss down too much. Yes, over time it does pack down. Oh, my hair all over the place. All right, we're good now. Okay, so we're gonna take that moss and make sure it's fluffy at the bottom. It will pack down, but the whole point is that it's gonna be in a pot that's gonna be appropriately sized for it. So the roots are gonna grow quite easily in here. When I water, it'll drain and it shouldn't be too soggy. It should dry out in a few days. Um, I'd expect four or five 
four or five days, even up to a week, depending on the temperatures, and this should be good. So we're gonna get it in there. So we're gonna take this, and ideally I like to open up the root ball a little bit, and we're gonna throw it right in here. This is a perfect size pot, I think. It should last at least a year, and these roots are gonna take over this pot very quickly. It's a more shallow pot, so I like to put some of my fowls in here because with that fluffy mix, it just doesn't, I just find that it accommodates the fowls pretty well. And then the next time I have to repot them, I really have to upgrade to a much bigger pot because the root systems are so extensive. But I like that approach. Like you use a pot that's as small as possible to accommodate the roots. Like it's gonna be, this is much bigger than the little sleeve it was in but it's not going to be swimming in moss and this little fluffy moss i just find that it just does so well for me in my climate here in new york city that i really won't use anything else unless obviously if the pot is enormous then you have to add other things to add more aeration but i find up to about six inches um the pot is fine with just moss anything bigger I do add a little bark or coconut husk or something like that. And you can see I'm not pressing it down. I'm being very gentle with it, but we do have plenty of air gaps in there. I'm gonna try to get some moss in, this, in these empty spaces. That's important. We wanna make sure that there's contact with the moss and the roots. So I'm gonna stick it in there, but keeping it nice and fluffy. And we want enough where the plant is not gonna like fall or wobble over, but we don't want it to be as packed down as it was before. So it's gonna be much more airy in there. And I find that New Zealand sphagnum moss, uh, this is very high quality moss. Um, I bought it in bulk from Sunset Valley Orchids. I bought a bale of, I forgot if it was three kilograms. It was a huge bale of it. It lasts for a long time. I bought it last year. It's a great price. Um, I think it was 130, something like that, but you can email Sunset Valley Orchids and they could ship it to you. But buying it in bulk is worth it if you have a collection that's as big as mine because sphagnum moss is really pricey. So if you buy it in bulk, it just kind of saves you. And this stuff, I it lasts a long time. When the quality of the moss is high, it will last a long time. Moss is usually faster to break down than other materials, but I repot every two years. So if something needs it sooner, I will repot it sooner. Like this might need a repot sooner than two years, just because the roots might just outgrow the pot, but this looks good. I'm happy with this. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more moss so that it is a little bit less wobbly. Just around the corners. And we are almost done here. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah, it's not gonna wobble or fall over. So that's my little repot on my Phalaenopsis Sogo Relics. We're gonna make sure to put the tag right back in there. I'm gonna water it. I'm not gonna fertilize it for the next few weeks since we need to get it used to this pot. So I'm just gonna give it plain water. And then when I start seeing uh, new roots growing again, I mean, there's roots growing in there, but we wanna give it a little break when we repot because some of these roots get a little bit wounded. We just want it to um, get used to this pot. I'm gonna water it, I'll let it dry fully and then water it again. I normally water these orchids as they approach dryness, but in the beginning, I like to just let them dry, then water again. Um, it was just something I've been doing for a long time after reading some articles on, um, just reading some articles on how to grow these orchids and it's just stayed with me. Um, but after it starts growing and it's used to this pot, has new roots, then I'll just water 
and then water as it approaches dryness. Phalaenopsis like lots of moisture and then they reward you with these beautiful flowers, especially these sequential bloomers. This one in particular has a really waxy flower, which I really enjoy. Nice fragrance. Flowers last for months, which is why I never repotted it. It was just blooming all the time. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this repot video. When I get back from my trip, I will have more videos up repotting some of my cattleyas, dendrobiums. I have a lot that's overdue, so send me some energy. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.